Here's a question. Do you combine data from multiple Excel files? Say yes. Yes. If you said yes, then I have got some good news. I'm gonna discuss the best practices to follow when you're combining data from multiple Excel files. Let's go. Best practice number one, keep the files on SharePoint in case you're trying to combine the data from multiple Excel files rather than those files being on your computer. There are a few advantages and disadvantages for this approach, but I would always prefer SharePoint. One advantage that you get if you keep the files on SharePoint is that your refreshes can be dynamic and you can also get incremental refresh. If you keep the files on your local drive, the refreshes can be slightly faster, but the problem is that your computer needs to be turned on or you need to have a gateway installed for the refreshes to happen. I don't really want that. I want the files to be on the web so that the refreshes can be independent without me being dependent on them. I've done a video on how do you connect SharePoint to your Excel or to your Power BI in case you do not know how to do that. I would highly recommend that you take a look at that video as well. Moving on to trick number two. Trick number two, CSVs are greater than Excel, both in terms of file sizes often and definitely in terms of speed when the data is being processed in the refresh. The structure of the CSV is way simple as compared to Excel and if you convert your data into a CSV format as compared to an Excel format, your refreshes are going to be way faster. Oftentimes the problem is that the data that you get from any particular software is in the form of Excel. So do you manually convert that Excel data into a CSV? That's a challenge that a lot of people face. Now I have done a video in the past which is where I talk about a Python script, very, very simple, that converts all the Excel data with just one click into as many CSVs as you would want. And then you can feed that data up in SharePoint. And from SharePoint, you can connect that to your Power BI and to your Excel. But remember, CSVs are greater than Excel and they're going to tremendously boost the speed of your refreshes. Go for a CSV. Trick number three, this is interesting. Use the folder.contents function rather than the folder.files function, which Power Query natively uses by default. Take a look at what do I mean by that. So I'm in a blank Excel file and I'm trying to connect to a folder, to combine the data, obviously. So data, get data from file from a folder. That's what people typically do. I'll do that as well. And here I will just pick up the folder location. So D sales data junk roles folder. That's the folder that I have. I'm gonna click on open and this opens up the entirety of that folder, whatever files are there in the folder and in the subfolders as well. I'm gonna click on transform that lands me into Power Query and this is how the screen looks at the moment. So if you take a look, this is my folder location and in this particular folder, I have subfolders as well. And what Power Query has done is not only taken the contents of the very folder, but also the contents of all the subfolders. So if you take a look at up on the far right, I have the main folder, which is this particular folder right here, but I also have any subfolder which is inside of that folder as well. Now, when you're using the folder.files function, this is the typical behavior of the folder.files formula. But if you change that folder.files to folder.contents, it's only going to pick up the very data of the folder that you mentioned here and not any subfolders. This is going to drastically reduce the transformation that Power Query has to apply in order to read the data. So take a look at this. As soon as I change the folder.files to folder.contents and uh, I press enter, you're gonna see that all the subfolder contents are then removed and I just have the very files that I'm trying to work with. Now this is only going to show me the files that I have and that's pretty much it. And here on the left hand side, I have the content and the name column and anything which happens to be in the subfolder is going to be subcategorized in a subfolder, which you can obviously filter it out and remove it and then start to work with the data inside of that folder. This is going to be a tremendous speed boost by not reading the data of the subfolders. Trick number four, filter first, then transform. I've seen a lot of people making this mistake, filter first, then transform. What do I mean by that? Take a look. So I'm working with this simple table, date, customer, and amount. Let's just say that I want to do a bunch of transformations with a few columns, perhaps a few transformations with the amount column, maybe a few transformations with the date column. Rather than carrying out the transformations, if I have any filters to apply, I will first apply the filters, make the data shorter, and then carry out my transformations. Transformations on a filtered data is going to be much, much faster as compared to transformations on all the data and then applying the filters. Let's just say that I would like to apply a filter to only a few selective customers. So I'll just pick up the customer here, apply the filters, to perhaps Boston Consultants and Goodfly. These are the two customers, hypothetically, that I want to work with. Click on OK. I'm left with only these customers now because the list has become a lot shorter. The table has become a lot shorter. Now you can carry out the transformations that you would like to do with all the columns that you would need. Remember, filter first 
and then transform. Best practice number five, use native function arguments rather than creating exclusive new steps. Take a look at what do I mean by that. At the stage in my query, I have two columns, the name column and the data column. And this beautiful button right here entices me to expand the table. Sure enough, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So as soon as I click on the expand button, I have all the names of the columns right here, which are in the table. So date, customer and amount. Sure enough, I can click on OK and then I expand the table. Now, after expanding the table, let's just say that I decide that I would like to rename a few columns. The way that most people are going to do is they're going to, let's say, click on the amount column, double click on the header or do right click and rename and they would like to call it as let's say sales amount. Now this is fine, but this creates a new step. We could have used the expanded data and the arguments within that formula to be able to rename the columns. Let me show you how. So I'm going to get rid of this particular new step rename columns that I've created. I'm going to go back to the expanded data, which is where I expanded the tables. Now, if you take a look at this formula, table.expand table column function, the first part is name of the table. What table are you trying to work with? I'm trying to work with the table which is there in the previous step, sure enough. Then it says, what column are you trying to expand? So data happens to be my column. If you just go back, take a look at the name of the column that we clicked on the expand button, that was data. Now, if I just go back and take a look, it provides us two lists, uh, which are there in the curly brackets. So this is my first list, the columns that we expanded. And then it repeats the names of those columns in another list. So again, the same list appears right here, which is date, customer and amount. Now, the second list right here is the ability to rename those columns right here natively in the very formula. And you don't need another step for that. So let's just say that I don't really want to call this as date as date. I want to rename to something I'll call this as my date. So I'll just say my date and the date which got expanded and automatically renamed to my date without adding another step. Similarly, I can do that for amount, call this as let's say sales amount. So sales AMT, and this is going to be renamed to sales amount. So rather than having exclusive steps added to your query, use the native function arguments to modify the behavior of the query. This is going to speed up your query a lot faster. Now to understand how these functions work and explore the native arguments of the function, you have to learn the M language or these formulas inside of Power Query for which I'd like to give a course shout out that I have on the M language. In case you're interested to take your M language skills a lot further and enhance the problem solving ability where you're trying to build more sophisticated queries, which are dynamic and doesn't break, I would highly encourage that you take a look at my course. In this course, we discuss several nuanced topics around the M language, how to structure problems, how to solve them. Hundreds of students have joined my courses and benefited from that. In case you're interested, the link is down in the description of the video. I suggest that you take a look at that and you shall benefit a lot. Trick number six, batch and merge the steps. Now, when you are a no voice power query user, you're just getting started. You're pretty excited to get your query automated and you know run down your steps. Quickly, you are going to find that you have a lot of redundant steps done over and over again that is going to slow down your query. Now, take a look at what do I mean by batch and merge the steps. So here I have a query which has a lot of steps and a lot of steps are done over and over again. And we could minimize the number of steps and potentially make the query faster. So if you take a look at the first few steps, I have source. Uh, blah, 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 filtered, Excel files, expanded concepts, skip junks, remove other columns. And this is where the actual query starts. So I have these uh, two columns, data and the name of the query, and I'm gonna expand these tables right here. So I click on expand and all the columns get expanded. Now with these columns that are expanded, I have to do a bunch of transformations and take a look at the query steps that unfold after the transformations are done. So first of all, I extract the year. So from the date, I extract the year. We have the date right here. Then I change type of that particular customer. So customer is set to uh, a text and then I add another column and I calculate commission. Commission is going to be nothing but 10% of the sales value. And that is right here. Then I change the type and I declare that as an integer. Then I insert a text before delimiter. That means from this particular name column, I just want to pick up year 2005. And that is what is done right here. Then I go ahead and rename the column. So the text before delimiter has been renamed to a file name, which is fine. Then I go ahead and remove other columns. So any other columns that were there, which was especially the name column, which was this column, I will remove it because I don't need it. Then I'm just going to go and take a look at the added custom step, which is where now I'm calculating the cost. So the sales amount now is multiplied with 35% to get to the cost column. 
then I change the type of that. So this is now declared as an integer. Then for some reason, I reorder the column. So file name is supposed to be taken to the first column and I reorder the columns and my columns look like this. Although reordering of the columns has no impact, but some people just want to see the columns the right way. So that's my first column, second columns, blah, blah, blah. That's my columns. And then I also declare a data type on, let's say the cost, which is nothing but numbers. Now this query has led you to an output which you are satisfied with, but you have cramped a lot of redundant steps in the query, which is potentially going to slow down your query. And I would recommend that you batch and merge the steps together. Steps that could have been done in one go, you do it in one go and batch and merge them together. What do I mean by that? Let's just take a look at a more finessed query right here. So this is another query with way lesser number of steps. So if you take a look at uh, these two tables right here, so we have the name and the data column. Now, if you remember in the previous query, we had the data column first and the name column on the second position. Now, because I want the columns to be reordered later, rather than doing a reordering step later, I would just write the name column first in the query itself and the data column second. And this is going to make sure that my query is in that order. Now, once I expand of these tables, we have expanded these tables. Now, rather than creating a new column from the name column, and extracting the first part of it and then deleting column, why don't I transform this very column right here? So if I just take a look at extract text before the delimiter, I have not only uh, cleaned up this particular column, but I have also extracted the date uh, or the year from the date in this very step. So if you take a look at the formula right here, you're going to see that not only have I said that, hey, please extract the text before delimiter and the delimiter is dot .xlsx, but I've also said to my date, please extract the year from my date. Now you can batch these transformations together. And for that, you need to learn the M language. If you're interested, the link is down in the description, but let's just continue for now. And now if I have to add more columns, the cost column and the, the commission column, I'm going to create a record. So if you take a look, I did create an additional column, but I defined my two columns in a record. So I said that my first column is going to be commission. My second column is going to be cost. And I declared both the calculations in the form of a record. I've done this trick in the past. In case you would like to take a look at that video, I'm going to leave a link. Nevertheless, click on OK. Now, all the columns that you want to create are going to be fed in that record. And sure enough, you can expand that record in the next step and have as many columns created with just one go. And now, finally, when you have all the columns and all the transformations done, I'm just going to apply the data type right in the end and set the data types for all the columns. And you can take a look that we have way minimal number of steps because we have batched and merged the steps together. As a no voice, you would not have the foresight to do that, but I will recommend that once you have finished your entire query, done all of the steps, now start to critically think about the steps and then try to batch and merge the steps together and your query is going to become way faster. All right, the final one and my favorite one, this is not perhaps going to improve the speed of the query, but improve the performance of your model if done well in Power Query or in any source of data that you're trying to work with, be it SQL or any other database as well. But this is super, super important. I would like you to kill the grain and kill the columns mercilessly. What do I mean by that? Grain simply means what does one row of data signify? So one row of data could signify one transaction, one date, one timestamp, whatever that might be. But if the questions that you're trying to ask in the model are at the month level, all the questions that you're trying to ask in the model are at the month level, then it doesn't make sense to have transactional level data because they're just occupying the number of rows. So for instance, if you take a look at the data that I have, I have the data at the day level. So this is the first Sorry, this is the first, the, again the first, the second, sorry, the sixth, the sixth, the ninth. I think this data is at the transaction level because the days are duplicated right here. So I would like to summarize this data if I'm trying to answer all the questions at the month level. So what I can do is I can just pick up this particular date uh, and just to say that add a column and I'll say that I want to add a year column. So click on the year and I would like to add a month column. Now I don't really want to create a new column. I can just modify this very column. So I can click on the column. I can go to the transform tab this time date and I can say this is going to be at the month level. Now this is month. Uh, this is date dot month. I can actually say month name instead. And this is going to give me the name of the month instead. So this is January, February, March, and so on and so forth. Now that I have the two columns, which I would like to use, I can go ahead and I can just use the group by option. So I can say transform, I can click on group by, and I can say that I'd like to go for advanced grouping. My first column is going to be the year. Second column is going to be the month name. Where are you? My date. 
and then I would just want to have total sales against that. So I'll say total sales and I'm just going to maybe sum the total sales, which is nothing but sales amount. Click on OK. And this is the very data that I need, which is at the level on which I would like to display or do my calculations. Now, what we have done in this query is that we have killed the grain and lesser data is going to go in the model. That means the capacity and the speed of the model is going to go up. What we have also done here is that we have killed the columns that we don't need in the data mercilessly. Do those two things, kill the columns and kill the grain and your model is going to be so much happier. <laughs>